Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's tutorial, I will show you five of my favorite tools to enhance your skies in Luminar Neo. Only a few things like the sky can make or break your photo. Editing the sky is one of the easiest ways to change your photos look and feel dramatically. This is why it's essential to learn how to use each of the following methods and use them sometimes even together to make your photos stand out. Now, as always, I will guide you through the entire process. And if you want to follow me along on your own computer, you can download the sample files I'm going to be using today. All you need to do is to head into the description of this video, follow the link there that will bring you into our Dropbox account and you can download the sample files from there. To start with, we're going to select the image with the cathedral and path and then we move it into edit module by hitting E on our keyboard or clicking on the edit on the top of our screen. Now the first tool and the first method is quite obvious. We're going to be using the develop tool. Regardless if you're enhancing your sky or the rest of the image, the develop tool should always be the first tool you're going to use. In our case, for this sample file, it's a raw file, so the develop has a little raw at the end. However, the technique I'm going to show you will work on both raw and JPEG files. Now let's go ahead and move into our main toolbar, open the develop tool, and the only section we're going to use is the light section. So click on it to open it. And the options here are exposure, smart contrast, highlights, and shadow. Now, looking at the image, you can see that the sky is the brightest part of your image. And what is that on the image? Well, those are the highlights. The highlights are representing the brightest part or the brighter parts of your image. So by going into the highlights and bringing the slider down, I will take the bright parts of your image and make them darker. So when I bring them all the way down, you see how we immediately get more texture, details, and color in the sky. Now, if you want to push this even further, what you can do, you can go into your exposure slider and bring it down a little bit too. So let's go somewhere around minus 0.5. Now the overall image became a little bit too dark. And to fix that, we're going to go into the shadow slider and we're going to actually bring it up. And again, following the idea of highlights and shadows, what we are doing, we are adjusting the highlights, the brighter parts of the image, and shadows, the darker parts of your image. So this technique is really this simple. You come in and start by adjusting your highlights. If it's not strong enough, then you adjust your exposure. And if you need to balance your overall exposure, you can always use the shadow slider for that. And now looking at the image number two, we're going to be looking at the second method and a second tool we can use to enhance our sky. Looking at the image, quite big dynamic range here. We have the nice cathedral with the lamp and a warm glow. And then we have the bright sky behind it with some clouds on it. However, it could get a little help. Now to improve this, we're going to be using the all time favorite enhance AI tool. So let's go ahead and jump straight into our main toolbar, open the Enhance AI. And here, as you probably know, we have a two options, Accent AI and Sky Enhancer AI. 
the first thing we're gonna adjust is the accent AI. Let's go into the slider and increase it until we like what we see. Now in overall on this image, I'm happy somewhere around 60 because what it does, it doesn't only adjust the sky, it also adjusts the rest of the image. After that, we can also try to use the sky enhancer AI. We can push it a little bit to somewhere around 30. When it comes to the sky enhancer AI, use it with a caution because what it does, it makes the overall image a little bit darker and it also adds a little bit of a blue cast into your sky. Now, while we're here, I also want to mention that with all the methods and all the tools, you can also use masking. When we go into the masking and we go into the mask AI, the application scan the images and then it will allow us to select only the sky. As you can see, it gives us option of sky, flora, architecture, water, natural ground and man-made ground. What we're looking for is the sky, so we click on it and then the application select it for us. Once the sky is selected, we can go back and have a look at the result. So at this moment, the special edit we have added using the enhanced AI is only applied to the sky. Let me show you the before and after. This is especially helpful when you want to take your time and edit your sky and rest of the image separately. Now moving on the technique and tool number three, where this one is specifically focusing on improving blue skies. For this, we're gonna be using the color tool that is located in the essentials part of our main toolbar. Click on it to open it. And then we need to go into the HSL panel, which is at the bottom of the tool. If you wanna see a full tutorial on how to use the HSL panel, make sure that you watch the tutorial on our YouTube channel. But for us, what we're focusing on is the gray dropdown box, and we're gonna be moving between saturation and luminance. So let's start with saturation. The saturation allows you to adjust saturation for individual colors on the image, like red, orange, yellow, and green. Now, as we mentioned, we're gonna be focusing on the blue sky. So we're gonna go on the blue color and increase the saturation until we like the result. Now we don't wanna go crazy. Let's just go somewhere around 55 and that's it for the moment. After that, we can go back to our gray dropdown box and we can click on luminance. The luminance will allow you to adjust the luminance for the individual colors or also the brightness of the colors. So let's go back to our blue. And this time, instead of making it brighter, we're gonna go the other way around and make it darker. So let's go somewhere around minus 70, which already looks much better. Let's have a look at the before and after, and it's looking great. We can still go back to our gray dropdown box, then saturation, and add even more saturation if we want to. Let's have a look one more time, before and after, and this is a really simple way of how you can make your blue much more stand out on your image and create the contrast between your beautiful fluffy white clouds and the blue sky behind it. Now I mentioned on the beginning that this is great for enhancing blue skies. However, with a little bit of imagination, you can use the same technique on enhancing your sunrise, sunset and golden hour, only the way that you would use different sliders this time you would use red, orange, and yellow. To top it off, if your image has other blue items on it, cars, clothes, people, and so on, this is another great example where you could use your masking, the mask AI, and then you would just use this tool and mask it to the sky. Once again, you can simply do that by clicking on the sky. It will select the sky for you. And now we really make sure that we only apply these adjustments to the blue that is located on your sky. The technique and tool number four works very well on skies that have a lots of contrast on them. Let's go back to our main toolbar, scroll all the way down to the professional section, and this time we're gonna use the super contrast tool. Let's make it nice and visible, and let's have a look what we have here. 
Now the super contrast tool allows you to adjust a contrast for specific parts of your image. Highlights, midtones and shadows. Now once again, coming back to the first technique where I mentioned that highlights represent the brighter parts of the image. So immediately we know that we're going to be working with the contrast in the highlights. So let's start by increasing the slider here. And when I do that, you can right away see how the heavy clouds standing out. If that's not enough for you, then you can go ahead and use the highlights balance and push it even further to get even more contrast out of your sky. Now let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the before and after. And the difference is once again huge. If you want, you can also try to use the mid-tones contrast slider and see if that's going to help. But for us, we can now close the super contrast tool and move on the technique number five. Now, before we are going to move to another technique, I want to quickly mention that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Masterclass. The Masterclass will help you to get the full power of Luminar Neo and take your editing skills and push them even further. It contains 69 lessons with over 6 hours of training videos in 4K quality. To learn more about it, visit our website cleverphotographer.com and to get the access to the best possible price, follow the link in the description of this video. And now it's time for the technique and tool number 5 that will help us to work with the sky if everything else fails. There are two options here. Either you were not lucky and you didn't get the sky you were looking for, or two, something went wrong and you just didn't capture it in a quality you wanted. Well, as you guessed it, the final option is to replace the sky. Luminar Neo has one of the best sky replacement tools on the market, so let's go ahead and try it. We have this beautiful old village from the south of England. We're going to go into the main toolbar, click on the sky AI tool, and we'll start by selecting our new sky. Let's make everything nice and visible again and click on the sky selection. After that, you can click on the gray drop down box and you'll see I have many different folders of the skies. And the ones we're going to be using today are from our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. So it was a golden hour time, so let's just go ahead and select the first sky. What Luminar Neo then does, it scans the image and replaces the sky for you. You can see it does a great job looking at the leaves and a tree and all the details. So just maybe the sky, I would like something a little different. So let's try another one. This one is a little bit too strong. Let's try this one. And actually, I think this one is looking quite good. Let's have a look at the before and after, and I think it's looking quite good. After this, we can then go into the sky orientation, mask refinement, scene relight, and continue with the edit. Let's start by adjusting our sky orientation. Horizon and vertical position is looking good. Just with the horizontal position, I would like the brighter part to be more behind the house here, so that looks good. After this, let's close this tab and open the mask refinement. Here, increase the global just to get more texture in this part of the image. We can also add a little bit more of the closed gap and definitely increase the fixed details that will help us around the leaves and in between the branches. Once we're happy, again, we close it, move to the scene relight, increase the relight strength and also add a little bit of relight saturation. When we finish here, we don't need to do any reflection as there is none here. And if we want, we can finish it off with other adjustments. For example, we can add a little bit more warmth to the sky and we can also make it just a little bit more brighter. When we finish, we can close the tool and continue with any further edits we want. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Give. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. 
for today. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.